It's Bernie Sanders for the Democrats up against Tucker Carlson for the Republicans in this hypothetical 2024 matchup. Today on Political Access, we're going to go through all these states and attempt to find a winner. And this was suggested to me in the comments, and I really like this matchup, and at the same time, I don't like this matchup. I like it because I'm going to consider both of these candidates to be in the populist wing of their parties. And I think that's what most Americans want. They want populist economics, and they want populist cultural issues. Now, the reason I don't like this matchup is there's going to be a lot of speculation. First of all, both of these candidates would be considered complete outsiders. Now, Bernie Sanders, I think he was more of an outsider when he first ran for president. I think he's a little bit less of an outsider at this point, so it depends how much he plays up his outsider status. Tucker Carlson would be considered a complete outsider, and the fact that both of them would generally be outsiders, as well as anti-establishment, the media is going to hate both of them. Now, it's a lot easier when you have one anti-establishment candidate in there, then you know the media is going to go hard in that direction. And we usually see that happen on the Republican side. Now, Bernie Sanders is the closest thing we've got to a well-known anti-establishment candidate for the Democrats. And the media would traditionally be against him. Certainly in the Democratic primary, we know they would not want him to get that nomination. Same thing, of course, would happen with Tucker Carlson. But we've seen an outsider like Trump get through the Republican side. On the Democratic side, we haven't seen it yet. So although they would not want to see Sanders in the general election, when it came down to it, if he were going up against Tucker Carlson, the big unknown for me is would the media actually come back and coalesce around Bernie Sanders? Would they see Tucker Carlson as a bigger threat? Or would they rather see Sanders go down in flames? Similar to how a lot of the Republican establishment wanted to see Donald Trump fail. That, to me, is a great question. And there's a lot of question marks in a lot of these states. Now, I think the general media is going to be more against Tucker Carlson. He does resist that establishment liberal ideology way more than someone like Bernie Sanders. So I could see them being a little bit more hostile to Tucker Carlson. So that's a little bit of my thought process going into this. But let's try to get started here. Safe states are over a 10-point margin, likely 5 to 10 points. Lean under 5 points and tilt 1 point or less. So this is going to be a big battle for the working class. The Rust Belt is going to be critical. Blue-collar Hispanic voters in Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, South Texas, Colorado, those are all going to matter. Black voters in the South, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, South Carolina, that's going to be important as well. Those voters in the South there would not traditionally be a fan of someone like Bernie Sanders. Now, Tucker Carlson... We know he said some controversial things over the years. I think that would get hyperplayed up in the media, and they would try to reject more of his anti-establishment populist views. But generally, I see Bernie Sanders being stronger on economics. A lot of voters are going to want to have a guarantee of health care, Social Security, higher wages, union rights, that type of thing. On the other hand, Tucker Carlson, he's going to be stronger on the cultural right issues, America First policies and a rejection of the widespread identity politics that has pervaded on the left. I think there's a lot both sides would find appealing. But as I suspect, the opposition is going to only find the bad things about both sides, and they're going to tear them down. There'll be a lot of old video clips taken out of context, things Tucker Carlson has said may be in poor taste at times, and then they're also going to do the same for Bernie Sanders. Sometime he may have praised Fidel Castro. All that is going to be played up. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be an ugly election. Now, that's a lot of background. So let's try to quickly go through the map. So let's start in Alaska. Then I have a safe for Tucker Carlson. Hawaii, safe for Sanders. Washington, Oregon, California, safe for Sanders. How about Nevada? Well, those working class voters there, I think they would probably be split. But in the end, the economics would give them the edge. And I have Sanders winning it by a tilt. Idaho and Utah, safe for Carlson. How about Arizona? This is a state that used to be more red. It's become purple as of late. I think they would probably view Sanders as just a little bit too much, not what they're looking for, as it used to be more of a classic Republican type of state. I don't think they're going to be big fans of Carlson there. But I think the populism would battle it out there, and in the end, Carlson would win it by a tilt margin. Montana, Wyoming, safe for Carlson. Colorado, this will be just under 10 points, likely for Bernie Sanders. It's become really tough for Republicans to compete in Colorado. Tucker Carlson, he would boost turnout a little bit there. But Bernie Sanders is definitely a better fit for Colorado. New Mexico, that would be a lean for Bernie Sanders. Probably just about five points. It's a tough call in New Mexico as well as a lot of these other states. But it's settled on a lean for Sanders. North and South Dakota, safe for Carlson. Nebraska at large, safe for Carlson. And the second district, that's the Omaha district. It's trended toward the Democrats. 
Although in most elections, Bernie Sanders would be considered too far to the left, I do have Sanders winning it in this matchup by a lean margin. Kansas and Oklahoma safe for Carlson. Texas, that I have is likely for Carlson. In this matchup, I think both sides would cancel each other out, and it would mostly default back to its political leanings, so Carlson wins it by six or seven points. Sanders would run up the margins in a place like Travis County in Austin, but Carlson, he would run it up big in those numerous sparsely populated red counties, up to Minnesota. This is another tough call. I think the turnouts would be strong on both sides. Carlson would be able to get some voters to go to his side that have yet to do so, but also Bernie Sanders, he's going to get out some good turnout in the Twin Cities and in some of the suburbs. So in the end, I have it as a lean for Sanders, but it's borderline lean likely. How about in Iowa? That is likely for Tucker Carlson. I think the state has just moved a little bit too far to the right for most Democrats to be able to compete here, and Tucker Carlson would retain a lot of the turnout that someone like Donald Trump had, so he would win that by over five points. Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, safe for Carlson. Now let's move up to Wisconsin. This is a tough state. As I've said, I think both sides would want to turn out for different reasons. This state, I think, is trending a little bit more toward the right than some other Rust Belt states. So considering the high turnout in Dane County and a lot of the counties that have shifted away from the Democrats over the last decade, I ended up going with it till for Tucker Carlson. Illinois, low double digits, safe for Sanders. How about Michigan? Bernie Sanders is strong here. But then again, someone on the other side, he would give it a really good run. It's just really too close to call, basically a coin flip. Any little change in the environment, that would sway this by a point or two. But in the end, I had to make a decision, and I settled on a tilt for Sanders. Indiana, safe for Carlson. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, safe for Carlson. Let's go down to Florida. This is a state where Bernie Sanders would probably not be very popular. The socialist label would be attached, and it would probably actually be effective in a place like Florida, especially South Florida. The state has moved away from the Democrats. There's no really telling how well Tucker Carlson would do, but I do have it as a likely over five points for Carlson. Let's go up to Georgia. This is another state that's been giving the Republicans some trouble as of the last couple of cycles. It is in the South. There's a lot of black voters in Georgia. I don't think they would necessarily be excited about Bernie Sanders. They're much more into the establishment Democrats. What if Tucker Carlson was on the other side? Maybe they would end up coming out more. But then also the suburbs, Cobb, Gwinnett, DeKalb counties. Would Bernie Sanders be considered too far to the left? Or would Tucker Carlson be too off-putting? These aren't easy questions. Up until very recently, it was pretty much a solid red state. So in the end, I settled on a tilt for Sanders, but it could go either way. South Carolina, safe for Carlson. North Carolina, lean for Carlson. Not much to say about any of those states. Let's go up to Ohio. This is a state that has moved to the right, where Democrats have a real hard time here. I've said this many times, but the economics of Sanders, I think those would play well. The cultural and the social side of Tucker Carlson, that would play well in Ohio. So who knows which issues would be emphasized the most. In the end, I have it as a likely for Carlson. The next state over is West Virginia. This used to be a pretty blue state, but now it is one of the reddest states. And there's a similar theme here with economics and cultural social issues. Both, I suspect, being effective at a place like West Virginia. But in the end, it's way too red of a state. And Carlson would win this easily by over 10 points. Let's go up to Maine. At large, likely for Sanders. The first district, that's a blue district. That's safe for Sanders. The second district, that is a much more Trump-friendly district. It's hard to exactly gauge the margin, but I have it as a likely for Carlson. How about New Hampshire? Although in some of the wealthier, northeast, highly educated states, that's where some of the economics actually might not do as well from someone like Bernie Sanders. That would result in some of the wealthier people losing some of their power and influence. They're not going to like that so much. However, when stacked up against Tucker Carlson, I do have New Hampshire is going lean for Sanders. And that's similar in some of these other states. But in the end, Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. are all going to be safe for Sanders. These are states where the cultural and social populism of someone like Tucker Carlson, they will be less effective in these wealthier areas. Now, again, as I just said, they're not going to be thrilled about some of the policies of Bernie Sanders economically. So it can be a little hard to gauge these margins. But I think the safe bet was to put those states all in the safe column. Some of them might be low double digits. Let's go to Pennsylvania. This is another one of these coin flips. If either one of these candidates was on the ballot against a generic establishment opponent, that would probably tip the scales the other way. But in this matchup, it's a very close call, trying to consider all the different factors. In the end, I settled on a tilt for Sanders. 
Let's go down to Virginia. This is the last state. The D.C. suburbs would traditionally be against someone like Bernie Sanders. Tucker Carlson would do well in the western part of the state and all the other Trump counties. But I think more Democrats would want to come out and be against someone like Tucker Carlson. And that would keep Virginia at a likely for Bernie Sanders. And that is my map. But that would result in 256 electoral votes for Tucker Carlson, 282 for Bernie Sanders. So this was kind of a longer video. I tried to explain a lot of my case at the beginning of the video. So I don't want to repeat myself. But the populism on both sides is going to be a strength. The anti-establishment stuff, it's a big unknown. But a lot of Americans are going to like that, even if the media is going to tell you otherwise. I think the ultimate candidate would be combining some of the cultural social stuff of Tucker Carlson with some of the economic policies of Bernie Sanders. I think that would be a winning candidate. And I think if that candidate existed, then you'd really see the media go crazy. So there's a lot of factors here. Again, of course, turnout of the suburbs, the independents working class, blue-collar voters, all the turnout with the different demographics, education and income, all of those things combined with an unknown national environment, unknown emphasized issues, unknown portrayal in the media, unknown scandals. It makes this an extremely difficult matchup. I think it's one of the more interesting matchups I've done. What I would like to see most is for both of these candidates to do some debating. I don't really care about some controversial things they've said in the past. I don't care about digging up quotes from 5 or 10 or 20 years ago. I want to hear them go down economics and state their vision, and I want to hear them go down cultural and social issues and state their vision. I want to know where they would go going forward, and that I think would be the most compelling. I don't want it to all be about scare tactics and try to put us in separate boxes. I think both of them would probably more so make it about the elites having too much control over the economy and the culture. That is the most important and probably even dangerous thing to consider. And shining attention on that, I think, would be valuable regardless of which side does it. So this is just what I think. You could make tweaks here, change some of the margins. You might want to flip some of these states like Wisconsin, Nevada, Georgia. You might see the election playing out differently. Maybe you have different turnout expectations. Maybe you think the establishments would turn on each of these candidates. There's plenty of unknowns, but this is what I came up with. This is a fun one, but a difficult one. And let me know down below. Do you mostly agree with this map? And what do you think about this particular matchup in general or either of these candidates? Let me know down below and on your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.